Today I want to talk to you about self-adjusting brakes on Dexter axles. And the problem with them is what Dexter tells you to do is to install your tires and wheels on your trailer and then go and hook it up to your truck and drive it to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brakes. And do that 20 times until they say that that's how you'll adjust your brakes. Well, the problem with that is, number one, I don't want to drag a 10,000 pound trailer to 20 miles an hour 20 times. Number two, I don't know if those adjusters are working at all and if they actually did something and adjusted correctly. So that means I got to go home and jack up my wheels again and pull off the tire and the hub and see if the adjustment has happened. So I came up with a way to do the adjustment uh, before I ever tow the trailer and have the brakes fully adjusted. And so that's what we're going to talk about primarily today. And I did that because I came up with a way to actuate the brakes here. And I'll show you that, uh, the, the wire harness that I made for that, which is super simple, um, and then how it works. So before I do that, I want to talk to you about just a couple of things. And I got my friend Doug here helping um, with the videos today, and I appreciate him for that. I want to show you how how I jack up this trailer. There's a lot of traffic out there on YouTube and discussion about that, so I'll throw one more out there. I've got these two 2x6s, and, and what I've done is screwed them together, and then I've gouged out this, this, this one a little bit so that it can clear this bracket. And this, these two 2x6s two go in right here against this plate and, and onto the bracket. And it spans across both axles. And then I put a floor jack in between the two tires and I raise this whole side all at the same time. And then I put jack stands under it. And it works really great. Now, I want to tell you about jack stands for a second. So these are three ton jack stands. But you got to be careful. That is three tons for the pair. That's not three tons each. So when you're sizing jack stands, realize it's for the pair of jack stands, not for a single jack stand. And then lastly, while we're under here, when I have a flat and I'm on the side of the road, then what I do is I use a bottle jack and I use this block of wood that I've contoured so it matches the contour of the axle. And I've also gouged out two channels in it that match the brackets, uh, these U-bolts, uh, on the leaf springs. And then in the bottom I drill a hole where, the, where I want the uh, bottle jack head to go into. And it's super stable and you distribute the load really well across the axle and those, and those hanger brackets. So there's a couple of things to think about in addition to what we're going to talk about today. Let's see, I want to make sure I cover everything that I wanted to. Okay, I built a wire harness to, uh, to run these brakes when, when we're not hooked up to the truck. So first I want to show you a diagram or two about that. So yeah, Doug, if you can, if you can get it so that we can see this, this diagram, that'd be great. So this is professional diagram as you can tell. And so here is, this is the RV, the fifth wheel. Of course, here's the wheels, here's the pin. Uh, here's the battery, that's the 12 volt battery that's in the RV. Uh, here is the hookup to the truck, right? Our electric hookup that would go to the, the truck. And uh, then on, in our actuation here, in the wheels, there's an electromagnet. And I'm going to show you that in a minute and how it works. It's how your electric brakes are actuated. So those electric brakes, they are grounded to the frame and to the battery that is in the RV. And so everything inside this purple line is the harness that I built super simple and I'll show you the harness so what it is is there's a connector on this end that is a female and it 
it connects to your to the normal uh, connector here from the trailer and the only wire that's connected is a hot wire to the brakes so then this goes to a switch which is just an outlet switch whatever I had laying around and I'll show it to you and then the, the wire comes uh, comes back and it hooks to the battery so the flow of the current is I've got a hot wire that goes from the battery to this switch and when the switch is off then there is no current flowing through the harness and to the brakes to actuate them but when I flip the switch then it actuates the brakes uh, on the trailer and so I'm able to remotely actuate it without having to hook up my vehicle um, and have somebody step on the brake pedal and do all of that. So that's that. Let me show you so that you've got uh, an idea. Here is uh, from Dexter. And so if you've got a seven pin recept receptacle, here's what it looks like. There's the brakes. If you've got a nine pin, there's the brakes. This view, as it says here, is looking into the tow vehicle. Or in our case, as we say there in the orange, it's looking into the harness that I built, the, uh, the female uh, receptacle. Okay, so let us let me grab that harness and, and I'll bring it over here with those papers. Okay, so here, here's this female receptacle and you can just buy this at Home Deep or at, at AutoZone or you know at your local auto parts store. Ignore this part. It's an adapter I had for for something else. All you need to all you need to have in this is this female receptacle, then a single wire that's hooked to the brake, and that wire then runs all the way through this, comes back to this. I got a big long wire here that runs because you got to get from your battery in the front all the way to being able to have a switch here at the wheels. So here's the switch and then the switch to the hot wire runs back down and comes here and there's our there's our hot wire that hooks to the battery. Uh, and so let's hook this up. So Doug if you'll follow me over we'll, we'll hook this up. Okay, so here's our hook up to the RV. And then in here is my battery. Here, Doug, you can come around and I'll borrow that for a second. Careful. Yep. Yeah. So here is our, here's my battery. And we're going to hook him to the battery. So there we go. And then here is our, here's our switch. We're heading over to our switch. Okay, I'll give it back to you, Doug. Oh, yeah, you can go on back and have a seat. I didn't want to hassle with a bunch of editing on this video, so sorry for being lazy. Now, this switch is going to actuate this electromagnet. So right now, here we are, look at that, okay, electromagnet's on, now I'm going to turn it off, and there we go. Now the way that this brake works, now that you can see how we get the power, here's the hub. Here in the hub, you know this is the drum for the brake, but there's this face here as well, and that's what this electromagnet rides on. So when you push on the brake pedal, then your brake controller is going to send some portion of your 12 volts to this electromagnet. And the brake controller says how many volts that's going to be. And so it could just start slowly grabbing it, so this slides along here, or it could lock up the brake and, uh, and you know, really stop you quickly. So that's how, that's how this interfaces with the electromagnet. Now here, there's a, we're talking about the self-adjusting mechanism, right? 
So when, when this electromagnet uh, is activated and it grabs onto the rotating hub, then the wheel's going this way, right? Typically in forward motion anyway. Then this grabs on and it, and it moves this brake shoe out. You can see the brake shoe goes out and it applies the brakes. Well, what it's also doing is there's a cable here. This is the automatic adjuster cable. And that cable runs down and hooks into a mechanism down here that we're gonna look at in, in more detail. Now, when you're, when you're going, it'll adjust, it'll work, of course, both ways. If you're in reverse and we're coming back this way, then, then you're, gonna, you're gonna go this way. And so I think it's gonna be easier, Doug, if you come over to this side to take a picture of this mechanism uh, when, we, when we go in reverse. Okay, so when we, when we put the brakes on in reverse, then I want you to see that cable comes down and through a, through a pulley back here on one brake shoe, and then it connects to this silver guy. And you see these little cogs, this is an adjuster that expands, right? You see that guy go up? Watch this yellow guy go up. See him come up? hear him click now as I let go he's gonna push that wheel that wheel just uh, just adjusted because there was enough wear on these brake shoes that it could expand far enough to cause that wheel to adjust a little bit more so that's how the adjuster the automatic adjuster works and so the goal is when you install it that number one you want to have you want to have this adjuster adjusted um, so that it's not really expanded, but you don't want it to be contracted all the way either. The threads are on this end because I found that if it's contracted all the way, then this mechanism won't work. And that happened on one of my wheels straight from the factory. The factory, uh, the adjuster wasn't working at all and hadn't for a couple of years. So you want to get two threads or so showing here on the adjuster when you uh, start start your adjustments. So you get that set and then what you do is install the hub and we're gonna and we're gonna do that next and I'll show you how we do that. So here's here's the deal when you go to install this hub for the last time the final installation then you're gonna have this bearing the inner bearing sitting in here on the inner race and you're going to have this grease seal pounded in there so that grease doesn't get out and into the insides of the wheel but we're not going to do that right now because we may be taking this hub on and off as we do these adjustments if something's not working right and we need to work on our mechanism so here's how i do it is that i take this inner bearing and I install it here on the, sh on the axle shaft. And now we're gonna install the hub, we're gonna install the outer bearing and the nut, and then we're gonna do our, our tests on it. So here we go. So there's our hub. Here's our bearing. You wanna be sure that you've greased your races and that you got a little grease inside here and some grease on the on the uh, axle shaft itself install him I don't have my washer I left it I forgot to bring my washer out there's a, there's normally a wa there's a washer that goes on here that I didn't bring but I'm not going to stop and go get that because you're getting the concept with me now once you have the washer on in this nut as you're turning it, you're going to be spinning the, you're going to be spinning this drum, the hub, so that you, so that you don't bind this bearing up in there, and you're going to spin that hub until, until you get it. Usually, I'll do this by hand with this, with this one and a half inch, one and a half inch uh, socket. So once you have it snug down. 
then when you install it the, the final time, Dexter tells you you need to, while you're turning, torque this to 50 foot-pounds, and then back it off with the torque wrench, and then finger it and hold the hub in a single spot, and then finger tight it, and then install your lock, your lock here for it. We're not going to do all that. But what you do at this point is get it snug, and I'll 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 hit it with the ratchet when I'm doing this to be sure that I've squoze all the grease out of the bearings inside, and then back it off, and then once it's backed off, then I just go finger tight, and now and now we've got a hub that we can start to test our our automatic adjusters on. Now I found that I couldn't do a good job just with the hub so that's why I'm going to here so let's go to here Doug what I did what I do then is I install just two lug nuts on the wheel so this guy's in here with the uh, all installed just like we were doing it over there only in this time we got a washer and so now without the brakes on then here's this wheel freely spinning right and so I'll spin it like this and then I'll apply here we go there's our brakes and I do that a couple of times to get it centered to get the brakes centered correctly uh, inside the hub okay once I've done that then I lock the I lock the brakes on and now I'm going to simulate what Dexter tells you to do in your car. Now I can't get this thing going 20 miles an hour, but I can sure really wail on it and, and try to get, try to get our, our electromagnet to move and click through that adjuster. And so how you do that is you take the wheel and you just go back and forth. Whoa. And don't be shy. You give it hard, hard twist both ways because it adjusts backwards and it adjusts every time it clicks forward and so I'll do this I'll do 30 forward whacks and 30 reverse whacks because I'm doing a reverse one every time I go forward and you do it just as hard as you can and what you'll find is as you're moving this tire back and forth when you first start you're gonna be moving this tire point from here to here and you'll feel it as the gestures are doing you pretty soon you're moving from here to here and then from here to here until this tire is got the adjustment done right and then you pull off the wheel nice and you pull off the hub and then you look and see if you got more thread showing on the adjuster than when you started and i forgot to mention that you want to see how many threads are on your adjuster before you get started so that's how I do it, nice. and uh, I hope that's, I, I hope you find that to be helpful. Now I can, with confidence, I can pull this hub off. I'll grease my bearings for the last time. I'll install my grease seal, and uh, and we'll do a final installation on there. And I know that my my automatically adjusting adjusters are working right, and they're set to the to the right amount. So. I hope you found it uh, helpful. Leave some comments down below if there's other suggestions that you have. And I hope you have a good day.